In the dark forest, amidst the midnight hour, a blonde-haired individual struggled to walk with darts lodged in their leg. Frustration and anger consumed him as he felt the numbing sensation in his leg. Suddenly, his gaze caught sight of someone rushing towards him screaming out loud, and he called out the person's name. It was Dale, who shared devastating news of their companion's deaths, claiming they were slain by a monstrous creature. The blonde-haired person found it hard to fathom that their team of PK pros, with an average level of 40, could have fallen to a single naked psycho. As they conversed, a hail of darts unexpectedly struck Dale's face, the darts glowed red, and soon exploded Dale's head causing the yellow-haired individual to scream in terror, the blonde man trembled in fear at the sight of Dale's corpse, determined to uncover the attacker's identity, he screamed out loud. He points his sword at a creepy-looking guy who was glowing red, calling him a monster but all the figure said was who am I? The scene shifted to the grand castle of the demon king, with bodies of monsters laying on the ground, where our protagonist, battle god Damien, is seen resting after a fierce battle. Grimacing in pain, he realized the extent of his injuries. Despite his impressive level of 904 and his top rank in the field of honor, he struggled to stay alive. Notifications flooded his screen, one after another, alerting him to abnormal states affecting his character. Damien clenched his teeth as he read each message, discovering that his character had fallen into a weakened, bleeding, and sealed state, rendering him unable to utilize any skills. Frustration and despair welled up inside him as he fought to keep his character alive. Another notification arrived, informing Damien that his character had been petrified, causing his movements to slow down. Battle God Damien pondered whether such a multitude of abnormal states were a common occurrence in the game as he tried to navigate his way out of this dire situation. Struggling to hold on, he silently acknowledged that not even the esteemed Saint Magnus or the High Heaven Immortal would be capable of healing him at this point. Suddenly, a mocking voice pierced through the chaos, likening Damien to a resilient cockroach. It belonged to none other than King Arthur, the leader of the Demon King expedition. Recognizing the voice, Damien called out John Newman's name, but before he could finish his sentence, Arthur attacked him with his staff. A warning blared, indicating that Damien's stamina had dropped below the threshold, risking his potential disconnection from the game. In a state of confusion and weakened condition, Damien questioned Arthur's motives for the assault. However, Arthur appeared to be distracted by notifications regarding the Lord of Abyss, Abraxas, who was raising his mana and attempting powerful techniques. Frustrated by the abrupt halt to the battle, Arthur grumbled to himself, lamenting that things were just starting to get interesting. As Arthur prepared to cast another spell, a notification popped up, cautioning the activation of the ultimate spell, multi-leveled weather reversal realm destruction. Despite the imminent danger, Damien couldn't help but feel a tinge of admiration. Once the spell was unleashed, Arthur resumed his attack on Damien, mocking him for his perceived lowly status as a hero who originated from a lower class. Battered and bruised, Damien couldn't help but question where things had gone wrong. Ten years ago, the virtual reality game Arcea Chronicle or AC was released, captivating players with its stunning graphics and vibrant non-player characters. The game's centerpiece, the Demon King Raid, promised the first player to conquer the quest the chance to establish a kingdom, become the hero of the AC world, and claim an illustrious trophy. Damien was one of the many players who dedicated their lives to AC investing all their time and energy into the game for a decade. Despite his family's attempts to dissuade him, Damien remained steadfast, convinced that winning the game's reward was the sole means to compensate for his shattered real-life existence. It was during the Demon King raid that Damien encountered King Arthur, also known as John Newman, a devoted servant of the goddess Arya, wielding the Infinite Circle, a source of boundless mana. With his warm personality and undeniable charisma, King Arthur spearheaded the expedition that led them to the Demon King's castle. Damien's thoughts raced as he realized they were on the brink of completing the raid. Suddenly, King Arthur acknowledged Damien's significant contribution to their success. However, Damien's trust wavered as he questioned whether King Arthur had intended to betray him from the outset. King Arthur chuckled at the inquiry, but his laughter swiftly transformed into violent aggression as he mercilessly pummeled Damien once more, hurling insults and labeling him as worthless. Overwhelmed with shock and fear, Damien contemplated the possibility of perishing without accomplishing anything, all due to the treacherous nature of King Arthur. Yet, in that desperate moment, a voice reached out to him, offering a chance for revenge and a new purpose. It was Abraxas, the Lord of Abyss, extending his assistance to Damien in exchange for the task of slaying the goddess of light, Arya, and embracing chaos as an avenger. 
Initially hesitant, Damien couldn't resist the allure of finally achieving something after dedicating himself to the game for countless years. As King Arthur continued his taunts and relentless assault, Damien made his fateful decision. He would seize Abraxas's offer and transform into Damien, the Avenger who would sow chaos throughout the land. Suddenly, King Arthur's brutal attack abruptly ceased as Damien awoke in his own room, drenched in sweat. Disoriented and bewildered, he struggled to comprehend how he had ended up there. Before he could make sense of the situation, his brother, Ma Jin Hoon, burst into the room, announcing that it was time to eat. Damien was taken aback since his brother was supposed to be serving in the military as an officer. However, Jin Hoon now donned a school uniform, leaving Damien questioning his own sanity. Gazing at the calendar, he realized it was July 28, 2020, the day when Arisa Chronicles beta version was released. The bewildering thought dawned upon Damien that he might have somehow traveled back in time. The confusion and uncertainty left Damien feeling utterly lost and disoriented, as if he had taken a wrong turn in a maze of bewilderment. His mind was a swirling storm of questions, unsure of what was happening or what would happen next. Even Damien's mother and brother were confounded by his peculiar behavior, their eyebrows raised in a perplexed fashion, wondering why he was acting so oddly. As they gathered around the dinner table, Damien couldn't help but marvel at the mouth-watering deliciousness of his mother's cooking, each bite conjuring memories of his carefree childhood. However, his nostalgic reverie was rudely interrupted by a raucous commercial blaring from the television, promoting Arisa Chronicle, the world's first virtual reality game. In that moment, a realization struck Damien like a lightning bolt to the brain, today was the launch of the open beta for the game. With a mixture of excitement and urgency, he informed his mother that he was heading to his own abode, promising to take care of himself and dutifully call her often. Hailing a taxi, Damien urged the driver to race to Jumjum Station with the speed of a cheetah on roller skates. As they sped through the city streets, Damien's thoughts drifted back ten years to a time of great turmoil in his life. It was a period when the Galaxy M24 app was the hottest gadget on the market, and Damien's own life was simmering with challenges. Taking on the daunting responsibility of providing for his family in his father's absence, he toiled relentlessly to make ends meet. The weight of this burden became an unwelcome companion, gnawing at his spirit until he sought solace in the virtual realm of the game, severing ties with his family in the process. It was a desperate escape from reality, a leap into a world where he could be someone else, somewhere else. Lost in his ruminations, Damien was jolted from his reverie by a blaring notification, its urgency akin to an alarm clock set to explode. It warned him that the countdown had commenced and he had to log into the game, or face certain death. Damien's brows furrowed in confusion as he hadn't even logged in yet. As he tried to make sense of the situation, a sharp pain pierced his skull, and a mysterious voice began to echo in his ears. Alas, the words were as clear as a foggy morning in a murky swamp, leaving Damien scratching his head in befuddlement. In the midst of his disorientation, the perceptive taxi driver noticed Damien's pained expression and kindly inquired about his well-being. Time passed, and Damien finally arrived at Sensodon Barossa Gil, a bustling street in Korea. He ventured into a virtual reality electronics store called Evertail Store, where a cheerful receptionist greeted him with a warm smile. She informed him that all the store's capsules were reserved on a first-come, first-served basis. Sensing Damien's eagerness, she suggested he undergo a customized examination. However, Damien was hell-bent on exploring a product that had just been released that very day. Unfazed by the receptionist's suggestion, he insisted on seeing the latest offering. With a mischievous twinkle in her eye, the receptionist led him to a refurbished product that had been cancelled by another customer, now serving as the store's demonstration model. Damien, without skipping a beat, enthusiastically agreed to purchase it, requesting delivery and installation that very afternoon. Later in the day, Damien found himself ensconced within the capsule, as if cocooned in a futuristic spaceship. The system's voice chimed in, notifying him of the progress in his user registration. He listened intently as the system announced the commencement of virtual reality mode synchronization, confirming that his registration was complete. Damien couldn't help but reflect on the fact that he had spent most of his hard-earned savings for this pivotal moment. However, there was no room for doubt in his mind, he believed with unwavering conviction that he had made the right decision. The voice of the demon King Abraxas only solidified his resolve, leaving him with a sense of purpose and a dash of villainous charm. With the synchronization of virtual reality mode complete, Damien took a deep breath and bravely uttered the command to begin his epic journey within the game. 
Meanwhile, at the top secret department of Oracle in Evertail headquarters in San Francisco, California, chaos ensued. Strange errors popped up on the screens, prompting urgent notifications about a potential mainstream detection and an accelerating blockage of the main protocol of Arcea Chronicle. Operator Chloe's voice trembled with urgency as she called for a code black emergency, instructing all employees to take swift action. In the midst of the commotion, team leader Master Hayak dashed over to investigate the situation, his cape billowing heroically behind him. He demanded to know when the error had begun, and Chloe reported that it had just reared its troublesome head. The Akashic record of blocking protocol for the mainstream was gradually gaining momentum, posing a threat to their control. If the situation escalated further, they risked losing all command. The mainstream, a realm yet uncharted, lay before them, while the Akashic record, a hyper-AI responsible for the creation of AC, loomed over it like a mystical gatekeeper. Hyakjin and Oracle had been entrusted with its guardianship, but if something went awry, the entire system, along with the game, could be wiped clean, as if devoured by a hungry digital beast. Notifications flickered across the screens, mercilessly reporting a decrease in control over the mainstream, plummeting from 48% to 36%, and finally dipping below 25%. The warning was clear, the Akashic record had started nibbling away at the server, much like a ravenous squirrel devouring a nutty snack. In a daring move to salvage what they could, Master Hayok made the difficult decision to relinquish control over the mainstream, sacrificing a slice of their dominion to prevent total annihilation. The Akashic record, sensing its opportunity, withdrew its grasp, temporarily pausing the blocking protocol, and activated the mainstream. Hayok confirmed that the operation was now in motion, taking a deep breath as the weight of the world rested on his shoulders. Back in the game, Damien found himself immersed in the virtual realm, greeted by notifications that confirmed his connection, displaying his player name, date of connection, and current location, the Whispering Island. Memories of ten years of gameplay flooded his mind, along with the burning desire for revenge against John Newman, the source of the humiliations he had endured. However, Damien quickly realized that he was not starting at the typical beginner's village leaving him pondering the curious whereabouts of his virtual feet. Just as perplexity threatened to consume him, another notification popped up, confirming his connection log and initiating a countdown. The three conditions were laid out before him, failure to log in within 168 hours meant certain death, death within the game would lead to death in reality, and failing to accomplish a given goal within a specific time frame also spelled doom. Damien stood there, mouth agape, his frustration and confusion reaching new heights. The notification further taunted him by removing his sense limit and renewing his final goal as the Demon King's Descent, offering a whopping 87,599 hours, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds to achieve it. As if that weren't enough, the game had seemingly meddled with his physical form, leaving him in a state of bewilderment. Just when Damien thought he had experienced a full range of absurdity, another notification chimed in, announcing a class on the Witch Doctor specialization for his final goal. Damien could only curse the game in disbelief, hoping for a sliver of sanity to return to his rapidly unraveling reality. Which doctors were enigmatic beings who harnessed primitive powers and had deep connections to death, ancient sorcery, and curses. Damien was taken aback to find that his in-game character, also named Damien, had become a level 1 witch doctor with abysmal stats. He felt disappointed with his newfound class, especially since it was a hidden class that was challenging to obtain and relatively unknown. The notification provided a description of the Witch Doctor class, highlighting their specialization in spells related to poison, curses, summoning, bones, blood, corpses, and souls. This class excelled in dealing damage over time, making them formidable damage dealers. Damien grew increasingly frustrated with his new class, particularly because the subclass of poison was his special attack, which didn't quite suit his preferences. Suddenly, notifications popped up on Damien's screen warning him that he had committed a crime and that his alignment had plummeted to an extremely low level. As a result, a penalty had been imposed on him, which left Damien scratching his head in confusion. The penalty seemed outrageously severe, with a 500% decrease in experience points upon death, a 500% increase in the probability of dropping items upon death, a 500% increase in the probability of equipment being destroyed upon death, nullification of the safe zone shield, and the constant threat of NPC attacks. This penalty practically branded him as the Demon King, much to Damien's dismay. But since he received a second chance with his life at stake, he wondered if he should cover his face.
Damien arrived at Dunvaden village and headed straight to the village head's home to receive a quest who greeted him happily. However, he had a paper bag over his head, attracting the attention of the village head, Elmore. Curiosity piqued, Elmore asked Damien why he was wearing a paper bag, to which Damien awkwardly replied that it was just a cool fashion statement. Elmore stared at him like WTF, but deep down, Damien felt embarrassed about it but had no choice but to wear it due to the compulsory quest. Moving past the paper bag incident, the Elmore commented that he respects Damien's taste. Damien asks if he could quickly get a quest which causes Elmore to fluster around trying to find a quest. Once he found the quest he became serious and tells Damien to listen carefully. The Whispering Island was filled with chicks, causing a problem as they'd eaten all their feeds, leaving none in the storerooms. Elmore places the quest letter on the table and assigns it to Damien to catch ten of the chicks. He ventured through the mountains behind Dunvaden village, where he spotted a lone chick. Warning, if you love baby chicks, turn away now cause it's about to get a bit weird now back to the story. Seizing the opportunity, he threw a dart and successfully caught it. However, the effort left him breathless, and he drops to the ground realizing that he only had one HP remaining. A notification reminded Damien of his quest to catch the chicks and protect the storerooms on Whispering Island. The tutorial quest required him to catch 10 chicks and retrieve 10 yellow feathers, with his progress currently at 10% after catching just one chick. Completing the quest promised Elmore's beginner set and a recommendation. Damien lets out a sigh unhappy that he only caught one, then he opens his status window. Damien checked his skill status and discovered that only one skill was unlocked, shooting of poisonous needles. The rest remained locked, amplifying the challenge of the quest. He thinks deeply about the skills and realizes there's no helping it as he can only learn other skills once he reaches level 10. He dusts himself off, saying that breaks over, he holds his long and thin pipe, he, he saying he now knows how to use it and is gonna do it properly, if you know what I mean ha. Huh? As Damien continued his pursuit of the chicks, he grew more adept and efficient with his soul unlock skill. He successfully caught several more chicks, earning valuable experience points along the way. Meanwhile, in the Yuxing Group's building, John Yuman, also known as King Arthur, emerged from a virtual reality capsule after testing a new game. Satisfied with the experience, he received an update from his secretary regarding the game's popularity. Confident in its potential success, John Yuman received a call from the director of the Yuxing Group, who had prepared everything he needed to dominate the game, the perfect class, the fastest leveling method, and all the necessary equipment. Excited to claim victory, John Newman eagerly anticipated his journey in the game. Back to Damien, he had just completed his quest of capturing ten chicks from Whispering Island, panting heavily from the effort. But his exhaustion quickly turned into exhilaration as a notification informed him that he had leveled up. Overjoyed, he exclaimed in delight. However, when he examined his status screen, he was left speechless by what he saw. His name was still Damien, and his class remained Witch Doctor but his stats displayed a mere one in strength, agility, intelligence, talent, and luck. On a positive note, he had five remaining stat points, a significant increase compared to the usual two. Damien couldn't believe his luck, perhaps this was a perk of having a hidden class. Realizing that things might not be as dire as he initially thought, he became determined to dismantle John Newman and wanted to soon shred him into pieces. Damien dashed through the bustling village, clutching his long and thin green pipe in his hand, while a rowdy group of hens trailed behind him. A player notices the noise and is shocked to see Damien run past him, he wondered what was it that went past him, but turning back shocks him even more, as he sees a whole crowd of hens chasing out Damien, the sight left other players dumbfounded, their minds spinning with speculation about Damien's true identity and intentions as well as the paper bag on his head. Some wonder if he was a tamer, but quickly dismissed the idea since tamers typically focused on a single powerful familiar. They look at him being chased by the hens, guessing he would soon die. Yet, Damien remained undeterred, fully committed to his quest of amassing as many chickens as possible. With a swift flick of his wrist, he dispatched one of the hens with a single dart. As he watched the lifeless bird fall, the other chickens began to rage towards him, startling him. He holds his long thin green pipe tightly and wondered if that was too much. He continues to run away from the chickens thinking if he wanted to clear Elmore's quest about the chickens, hens, and roosters quickly, gathering a mob of them was like a play. Damien searched intently for something, his eyes scanning the surroundings. The hens, growing increasingly aggressive, only fueled his determination. With a wicked smile, Damien revealed his cleverly laid trap, luring the unsuspecting hens into a pit. 
A victorious grin spread across his face I think I don't really know since his face is covered with a paper bag so back to the story as the feathery mob fell right into his clutches. He relished the prospect of converting the captured chickens into valuable EXP, eagerly anticipating the rewards that awaited him. Amidst his triumph, notifications flooded Damien's screen, declaring his victory over the hens and rooster as they lay dead inside his trap and announcing his ascension to level 9, Damien clutches his fist in excitement. He blushes at the thought of keeping this up to level up to level 10 to obtain a new skill, however, another notification caught his attention as EXP increased only by one. His eyes darted towards a nearby forest as a chicken was slain with a blade, where he spotted a group of players joyously slaughtering the very chickens he had prepared for his quest. Anger simmered within him as he approached the players, demanding to know if they were having a good time. Without warning, Damien's fist connected with the face of a player named Chiul Min Jang sending him soaring through the air before landing at a safe distance. Chiul Minjang's screen lit up with a flurry of notifications, including one indicating that his character had fainted, rendering him temporarily unable to control it for the next five seconds. Fuming with indignation, Damien accused the group of voraciously devouring his hard-earned poultry and firmly insisted that they regurgitate their ill-gotten gains. The opponents, caught off guard, skeptically requested proof of their wrongdoing. With a triumphant gesture towards the fallen hens strewn about, Damien provided irrefutable evidence of their guilt. He sternly warned them that this was their final opportunity to make amends before ordering them to leave, demanding the return of their chicken dinners. One of the opponents, dazed but determined, rose to his feet and lunged at Damien, hurling a colorful expletive in his direction. Unfazed, Damien calmly warned him of the consequences and retaliated with a precise dart from his blowpipe, silencing the opponent's misguided bravado. Outraged, the remaining opponents launched a joint assault, seeking retribution. However, Damien's agility and skill allowed him to deftly evade each attack, countering with calculated strikes from his dart blower. With each successful hit, he reiterated his demand for the group to surrender their ill-gotten feasts. Bruised and defeated, the opponents questioned Damien's audacious conduct, prompting a notification that their party member, Dongchiol, had met an untimely demise. One astute player deduced that Damien must be a chaotic user, an infamous expert in player killing, akin to a notorious criminal within the game. As this realization dawned on them, panic set in, and they scattered in a bid to escape Damien's wrath. Yet, Damien had no intention of letting them slip away so easily. With swift precision, he unleashed a flurry of poison darts, ensuring that each opponent received a notification indicating their characters had been infected. Satisfied with his victorious display, Damien surveyed the battlefield, only to realize that one opponent remained unaccounted for. A puzzled expression crept across his face as he pondered aloud the whereabouts of the elusive player. Unbeknownst to Damien, the missing adversary had concealed himself within a nearby bush, muttering curses under his breath. Desperate to escape, he attempted to log out, only to be met with a notification, log out was prohibited during an active battle, leaving him stranded for another 300 seconds. Blaming his misfortune for stumbling upon a chaotic user, the hidden opponent begrudgingly accepted his fate. Suddenly, Damien's voice pierced the silence as he cheerfully greeted the trapped player before swiftly dispatching him with a dart, putting an end to his futile resistance. Damien couldn't contain his excitement as a cascade of notifications filled his screen, announcing his acquisition of yellow and white feathers, basic HP potions, and his attainment of level 10. Finally, he could unleash the skills that had been tantalizingly out of reach. The results exceeded his wildest expectations. However, Damien's jubilation was short-lived, as another torrent of notifications disrupted his revelry. He had committed PK, player killing, and his alignment had plummeted by one. Notably, his alignment had already hit rock bottom, leaving no room for further decrease. Observing this revelation, Damien chuckled to himself, acknowledging that he had already scraped the bottom of the alignment barrel. He mused over the effects of the atrocity title, which, although bordering on cheating, boosted the drop rate of items and gold obtained from PK victims, while also granting him automatic possession of their assets and experience. With newfound determination, Damien embraced his controversial path, eagerly anticipating his future advancements.